I wasn't sure what I was making today, but I knew it was going to be chicken because that's what I had thawed out. And to thaw things fast, I just was talking with someone else who cooks a lot. And she said she also does this, but I know some people might balk at the idea. So I take the frozen chicken and I put it in a big bowl with cold water <laughs> and it sits down in my sink and it gets thawed out really super fast. So that's what I'm using today. And I had some fresh asparagus and I'm making orzo on the side, but let me show you what I'm gonna do with this chicken. Okay, well, first of all, let me show you what I'm starting to do with this chicken. Alrighty, you guys have probably seen me do this before. You know, I buy whole chicken breasts sometimes, and other times I buy tenders or thighs or whatever, but in this case, I had a couple chicken breasts out. Let me turn down my stove here. And you've seen me do this, where I take the fatter end and I kind of do a sawing motion like this. So this particular one, like I got this little thin guy, right? I'm just going to pound them out. I got this one. And then this has a little fatter end. Now you want to make them all as even as you can. So what I like to do, instead of saran wrap and saran wrap, and it still splats. So what I do is I put them in here in a uh, big, large gallon bag. Some of them are flatter already, you know, at one point. Some of them pretty much disintegrate, but trust me, it's all right. So let me do this other one here, and then I gotta wash my hands again, of course. And see how I'm using a different cutting board than I will for this? Because once you do uh, your meat, especially chicken. So I'm gonna go like this, and I can kind of feel it with my hand. Just be careful at the end, I'm gonna lift up my the back of my hand, just in case, because it's thinner down here. And then I have another little piece. Okay, I can get one more off this because I'm gonna pound them out. Okay, I'm gonna go slow, okay, and I can feel it. And if you just get a little guy, it's okay, because sometimes you just want a smaller piece of chicken. And then see, this is the fatter one, and then these are nice and thin already. I'll hardly have to pound these out. So let me get these in the bag. And then we have several pieces. Of course, let me get rid of this and Turn off my camera, we'll go from there. I'm gonna stuff them. Okay, asparagus. Um, this is the fresh, and I like the thinner the better. That's just my preference. I think the uh, thicker stuff tastes woody. Now I rinsed it off, but not only did I rinse it off, I'm just gonna promote here. I use the Thieves Veggie Wash. I just spritz it on just a little bit, goes a long way. So I have this in my kitchen at all times. Some veg are just more nasty than other, you know? So um, I'm gonna cut it off now at some point. Oh, I need a different knife. Some people say wherever it breaks, that's where you should cut it. But I'll tell you, I don't wanna waste all that. <laughs> So I just cut it when it starts to get like, you know, colored. Could you use those? Maybe, but yeah, I'm not going to. Okay, so there's those. Okay, and then I'm going to bread my chicken. Oops, let me get that. See, I pounded it out really nice and thin. Okay, I'm going to take it out. And I think I will put a little breading on it, just the toasted breadcrumbs and not the panko this time. And I'm gonna roll it up with some different things. And I just kind of look in my fridge and say, what do I have in there? What goes good with asparagus? Well, shallots do, but I just have the dried shallots. Garlic does, but look at my garlic. It's kind of really sad looking, isn't it? So I cut a couple pieces open to, to check it out because I like to use what I can. Some of them are right, but if they have that green thing in the middle, you know, where it starts to grow again when you cut it open, I just kind of get it out of there because I'm going to crush it anyway. So trust me, it still tastes like garlic, but I'll cut that little end off, you know. What else did I, what else goes good with chicken and I think um, some kind of cheeses maybe, like a, a little, I have fresh mozzarella, I just thought of that. Maybe a couple whole tomatoes or I'll have the cherries in uh, the grape tomatoes in half. I think because they'll look pretty. Oh, it'll be like all the Italian colors, won't it? It'll be green and red and white mozzarella. Ooh, baby. 
How about that? Okay, let me get started. You know, I was thinking about it, and I don't want to put the tomatoes in the um, in the chicken roll-up things. I want to put them in. I'm making orzo today, and I thought, uh, have you ever seen this little trick? I hope it works. Okay, you get a dish. Many of you probably are saying, yeah, I've seen it, Shirley. Well, I'm doing it here. And you get an additional one of the same kind of dishes, and you put it on top, and you push down, and then you go in, and you saw it across. Although, you know what? This dish is raised. I don't know that it's going to work. Let's see. Ta-da. They're all in half. So it worked. See that little trick? Instead of cutting them all one at a time. Um, I've never done it with this kind of dish. It's kind of raised, so I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. But voila, it worked. Okay. So moving on. I decided to throw my asparagus in a little bit of the remaining boiling water that I had. I'm just going to par cook it. Wanted to show you this too. I keep my onions and see how this is a little bit. This is all about waste, not want not, like I always say. So get rid of it. Now you got, you know, whatever. Now you have all these nice little onion rings, right? Half rings that I cut off of this. And am I going to save this? You betcha. I'm still going to save this because this purple onion, remember I just posted that little uh, thing. I didn't make it up. The little chart says which onion for which thing. Um, I just kind of naturally, you know, these are good for certain things. And we always use these in our salad and that's plenty for a side salad for us for dinner. Okay. So what I did was I breaded up um, the chicken cutlets and I used plain toasted, these breadcrumbs, not panko tonight, a little garlic salt, and a little bit of cheese. Okay, notice this lid. Do you do this? I've been saying this for 100 years. They all fit on the smaller mason jars. Look. And then if you decide not to do, you know, your pasta or whatever in it. But like we have them with the nut or nuts in them, like cashews and almonds. And you can go like that and pop the top and just shake some out without doing a mason jar type of lid. Or you can use the shaker side when it's appropriate. Just thought I'd show you that too, because it's here. So you're going to get rid of anything that came in touch with the chicken. Even if you had a lot, you over poured, you got to get rid of it. Don't, unless you're going to bread some cauliflower or something right that same day. And you can use my little bit of egg I give to my animals, my cats, or when I used to have a dog. <laughs> it's good for their coat, and they really, really like it. So let me get rid of this, tidy up a little bit. And Decided, I'm going to use my um, little unit, my little ninja that I've been using. It has a lot of different cycles. It has roast and bake and dehydrate and all that. I'm going to bake right in this pan. I don't know what they seasoned it with, but it doesn't stick. But to catch juice and whatever, I'm just going to put more. I'm going to put foil on the bottom. Okay. Flip it over. Just to, to help it non-stick. So I'll put the chicken in here. Alrighty. I found some in my fridge. I decided I, instead of the tomatoes, I was going to use um, the onion, asparagus, and some Swiss. I have this mozzarella. It was in a mozzarella ball um, from Sunday. Everybody came over after church and I made pizza. Margarita pizza. So these are kind of craggy. Is that a word? I always use it. And I have to decide now which way do I want to roll it up that way or this way. I might roll it up this way. So I'm going to start with some asparagus and put a couple onion in like so. This is going to be tight, but I don't care. It'll be good. Okay. And how about some of that? I should have put the Swiss down first, huh? And give me a half a piece of Swiss. Yeah, a whole piece. I like when it oozes out the side. Okay. So let's see if we can do this. Push down here. Try and have an onion escape. Some of the breading will come off. I don't care. Okay. Look at peekaboo asparagus. That's all right, too. I'm going to lift it up and seam side down now. Get in there, you Swiss chase. Seam side down. I'm going to place it in here. See, this does not have to be perfect, as you can see. OK, 
okay? Let me put my Swiss down first. Oh, I should have got that up. Let me get a fork. Because my hands are kind of caca. So I don't want to... There. <laughs> Just rip this apart. This is a nice bigger piece, right? Like that. Some asparagus, as Thane calls it. Some onion. A little onion, some cheese. I already seasoned the um, bread crumbs on here. Oh, this is crazy, Shirley. How are you going to fit that in there? Well, I don't know. But it tastes good when I cram it all in. I don't want to be skimpy. <laughs> They'd never invite me on a show. <laughs> Look at this thing. But you know what? Seam side down. I'm going to continue these and put them all in this little pan. All right. Be back again. All right. We're over to the orzo. Um, just read the package directions. Very similar to rice. I cooked it. Then I drained it. It's a real starchy type of um, uh, pasta, if you will. So I rinse mine and then drain it a little bit further. Okay. So let's add some fun things to this. I never know what's going to go in here, but I always think about asparagus going in it. So I'm going to give it a little olive oil. I have it on some heat here. Let me turn up the heat a little bit. Get it going. And then I simply will add in the following. I have my cherry tomato halves, the rest of that little purple onion, red onion, and the ends of the asparagus, or not the ends, but the leftover asparagus. So let's put that in. The tomatoes will kiss the pasta and let off a little bit of their juice. Okay. My garlic, as you saw, looked a little eh, off. So I'm going to use the jar of garlic this time in just a little bit. Okay. In fact, I think I just want some of the, a little bit of the juice, the garlic juice. Did you see that? Put that in. I can always add garlic powder or something too. Okay, I am going to add a little salt just on the veg part to make sure they got it. And I love pepper. So pepper's going in. Thane loves pepper too. Also, let's see what this looks like so far. I'm going to have the heat not real high, just enough. And remember, I made the uh, asparagus already a little bit tender. So won't this be a nice side dish? You know what I decided to? I went over to my little ninja unit and I decided I'm not gonna put it on bake. I'm gonna put it on air fry. Last time I did something on air fry, it was so good. So I'm gonna have this down pretty low. And at the end, I'm gonna add a little bit of this cheese. Nope, 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 yum. And I'll taste it and see if it would like anything further. But I think this will be a nice little side dish. Very colorful, isn't it? And so once those tomatoes start letting their little juice out and wilting down a bit, it'll be quite, mm, smells good already. <laughs> Me and my nose, I have to smell everything. We always say that's a Jones characteristic. <laughs> oh, oh, one other thing. That's right. Let's put in some of these, these little dried chatlets. I got this at TJ Maxx and I'm not sorry I did. Okay, you just need a little bit. I love shallots, and these are dehydrated, but the moisture in there as it cooks will definitely hydrate them, okay? And I'll just toss it one more time to get those little shallot pieces underneath the moisture. We'll come back, and we'll look at chicken and our little side dish, and I don't know what else for dinner. Alrighty, I had them on bake for 12 minutes, and they look wonderful. And now I switched it to air crisp or, you know, air fry. And I lowered the temperature from 350 to 300. I did spray them with a, just the tops with a little bit of the coconut oil spray. Look at these things. Gorgeous. So in about 13, 14 minutes, because I just switched it to bake, I just want to make sure the internal chick chicken temperature is is good and I think it will be I pounded those uh, this is two breasts I pounded the I, I cut them down lengthwise and pounded them out in between a gallon uh, ziploc bag and there you go
I think they're finished actually. I'm gonna go check them now, but don't they look good? Asparagus, a little Swiss cheese and whatnot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I better stop this now and check. Okay, here's our little chicken roll up. It's hot. Where's this thing? Okay. And there's gooey cheese on the other side. Ooh la la. Now it's probably too hot to um did your grandmas ever make these? <laughs> I'm like I'm like that little dog, Kevin, in the Disney movie up. Squirrel. <laughs> you guys know that movie? I change like subjects so fast. I'm sorry. But this is interesting. They used uh, pop bottles, soda bottles, the caps. Some of them are cork. That means they're older. They put foil on these. They don't come really come like that, I don't think. But anyway, they would crochet them. My grandma Mancuso made these. And I got this on at a yard or an estate sale that I did. So what I was getting back to before <laughs> uh, is I really should let it cool down so the cheese has a chance to stay in there. And also look, this little part of the asparagus got yucky because it was exposed. So look at what I'll do, boom. Get out of here. But I wanna cut it open, kind of look at it. Okay, let's look. Ow, it really is hot. Oh, the cheese is gonna go out. Come on, somebody. Well, maybe it'll look nicer like that. But you have your little asparagus in there. And your cheese and onion and a little bit of mozzarella. That's the oozy part, right? And this is nice and crisp. And then over here, we have the orzo pasta. Let me move this over on my mat. And like I said, I was gonna finish it off. The, oh, look, the tomatoes like lend, rendered out a little bit. See how they're a little bit flat? Like that, see? And they're fresh tasting though. That's the difference. You know, that is the difference, to taste fresh, okay? And this is my, our favorite, Asiago. So I put cheese in there and this will melt a little bit. You could do it at the table too, but I wanted to show you guys, okay? Hey, and I wanna say this too. Now listen up. Um, just because I had like, Jarred shallot, dried shallots. That doesn't mean this is a recipe. It's not a recipe. It is an idea to work off of. You know what I mean? Like orzo pasta and then say, what do I have to go in it? That's what you do. Look in your fridge, you have spinach. It will wilt down real nice in there. Little onion and whatnot in the spinach. I've done many ways. But for some reason, I like these little uh, asparagus stems in here. I think they're really good. And the pasta has a little tinge from the tomato too, if you've noticed. And I let the onions cook, that little bit of purple onion in there. But this is by no stretch a recipe that you have to run out and get everything to follow. It sure isn't. Same way with the chicken, you can put in anything you want. Alrighty. So there's another little idea. We'll serve it with our uh, the rest of our spinach salad that I had the other day. And I kept the dressing to the side and we'll put the dressing on right before it is served with just some croutons. Very simple. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you liked about the video or what you might try. How about the little tomato trick with the two plates? Thought that was kind of neat. Okay, love you guys. Bye.